with the draft lottery behind us, we know where the bottom 16 teams will be picking going into the draft. We know who is going first, but after that, who knows? Where does Meechkoff land? Who will Montreal take? What will the top 10 look like? I'll give you my picks for the top 10 right here, right now. Do you agree with my picks? Yes? No? Let me know in the comments below. Hey everybody, I'm Rick. Welcome to Talking Habs. So it's that time of year again. Um, we've had the draft lottery, so we know all the positions where everyone's picking, and it's time for a mock draft. So we're going to do a mock draft today from um, picks 1 to 10, and uh, let's get started. Without ado, let's get started. With the first pick, I don't think it's you know, any secret what that pick's going to be. Chicago is going to take... Connor Bedard from the WHL. He's a center. Generational talent. The only top 10 pick you can pencil in beforehand and know that you're right to start the season. Um, he's not overly big. I didn't actually write down his uh, height. I believe he's like 5'10", 170, 80 pounds. So he's not a super huge guy, but there's no doubt the best talent in this draft. Outstanding offensive potential scores, makes plays, excels at everything on offense. Defense needs some work, but, you know, so what? Number two, Anaheim. Um, Anaheim is, I think, without a doubt, going to take Adam Fantilli of the NCAA. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know what team he's playing on. Anyway, not a big deal. He's a big, skilled center who racks up points. He's the Hobie Baker winner from this past season. Um, he'll go back to college next season. That's without a doubt, probably for two more. Uh, has all the tools in his toolbox and would be a number one pick in the draft without Bedard there. So number one center potential, exceptional skater. And I think without a doubt, Adam Fentilli is going to go number two. Columbus Blue Jackets. Com Columbus Blue Jackets going into this draft have said already that... Um, they're taking a center. Um, and I, I think that's to go one-two with uh, Johnny Hockey. That's Johnny Goudreau, who's not overly big. So I think they're looking for a big center. And I think that guy is going to be Leo Carlson. He's got a really high ceiling. He's six foot three, 200 pounds, so he's big. Elite level, two-way impact forward, playing in the SHL as a teenager versus men. Strong. Highly talented playmaker, natural center. He's a natural center, and I think that might be some of the key here. He's a natural center. It makes sense that that's what Columbus would be looking for. Calm, doesn't panic, a threat in all three zones, always in the right place, wins board battles, uses his size well, smooth skater, soft hands, and will continue to develop in the Swedish league. Uh, for another year or two, you got to think. So, yeah, I think number three is uh, Leo Carlson. And quite frankly, if he drops to Montreal, it sounds like a guy I'm going to be happy with. Number four, and it's the San Jose Sharks. And um, everyone knows Matt Feimichkov. We want him here in Montreal. A lot of people do. I, you know, I'm okay with it. Um, um, he's going to be a great player, no doubt. I don't think he gets past San Jose Sharks. And I think San Jose... Picks Michkov. Second best skill set behind Connor Bedard in this draft. He's small at 5'9", 159 pounds. That's what he's list, listed at, right? He might be a little bit heavier, but not that much uh, at this point. Highly creative with elite puck skills. Extremely intelligent. High hockey IQ. Great stick handler. Puck seems glued to his stick at times. Aggressive puck handler. Does things with the puck that makes your head explode, <laughs> puts on a show with his skills and backs it up with good numbers. He's playing in the KHL versus men. By the time Michkov reaches the NHL, which should be 26, 27, he'll be 21 and fully developed like Kirill Kaprizov. Um, with uh, new info, though, coming out, assuring Michkov will be here in 2026. There's some new stuff out about it, and um, they, they assure us. Uh, so ruling out the war affecting it, so you got to roll that out. It's unlikely Michkov goes past the Sharks. They 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 can wait. I think they can wait, and um, 
And they've drafted Russian players many times, so I don't think that's a problem for them. And I don't think they're in that huge of a rush, you know, to be a contending team so they can wait for this guy. And I think they will. Rumors in San Jose are that they're going to pick him, and um, I think they are. All right, now we're getting to the uh, big one. Montreal Canadiens, that's the one that counts. Montreal Canadiens, I think, uh, relieved from not having to make the decision on Michkov, probably, will take their target, I think, going into the draft. And that is, if I can find them, Will Smith of the USNDTP. He's a center. I think Smith has was Montreal's target going in. So it'll be no surprise if they choose him. Smith is extremely uh, well-known to GM Kent Hughes. He's coached him um, as a kid. Um, when I say a kid, probably not that many years ago. Uh, but he knows him extremely well. Um, he's very creative offensively and reliable on defense. Very good skater with great maneuverability. Can stick handle in a phone booth and score a quote from a scout. Great in all three zones. Fast enough to separate himself from defenders on the rush. Very deceptive. Great playmaker and finisher. Difficult for defend defenders to predict what he'll do. Has pace. That's the ability to make play, make tough plays under pressure at high speeds. And if you want to be like guaranteed, you're going to be like somewhat successful to very successful in the NHL. You need pace. Progresses the game extremely quickly. Needs work on his skating and decision making. Both coachable. Big point producer will drive the play on his line. Very few weaknesses to his game. And I'm going to be very happy if Montreal gets Will Smith. And like I said, that's their target, I believe, going in. And um, from, from the way it's looking, it looks like they're going to get him. Next up is number six. That pick belongs to Arizona. Arizona, I think with the trade of Jeff Chikrin last season, um, they've drafted a ton of forwards in the last uh, bunch of drafts. I kind of think they're going to reach out for one of the de big defensemen that are in this draft because if they don't, I don't think they'll be there at number 19, and I think they're going to do this. I think they're going to take David Reinbacher. He's Austrian. He is a defenseman, right shot, uh, so he's a right-side defenseman. The Coyotes need to add some top ND to their prospect pool, and with Reinbacher um, or Bacher, being the more uh, well-rounded D at the top end in this draft, and he would be a good fit for the Coyotes, I think, and probably the most NHL-ready um, defenseman in this draft, from what I'm reading. Good size at six foot, two hundred ninety pounds, a legitimate two-way threat on defense. A teenager playing in a men's league and finding success. High defensive IQ, strong in front of his net, very high floor. I think I'm hearing that he's got the highest floor on the, uh, of defensemen in this draft and maybe of all the players. I'm not sure if that's what I heard. Um, top 4D for sure, and maybe top two if he, um, if he reaches the ceiling. So, yeah, so David Reinbacher for Arizona at number six. After that is Philadelphia at number seven. Philadelphia is definitely looking for, I think, an offensive star if they can get one. I think um, they're going to take this kid, Ryan Leonard of the USNDTP. He's a center winger. Uh, six, he's six feet, 195 pounds, not overly big, but very versatile player. Truly can play all three forward positions and play them all well. A dominant two-way forward that can rack up the points. And that's key. He he, he is a uh, two-way forward, but he racks up points. Um, there's no doubt about that so far in his junior career. A player you could see working well with a guy like Cutter Gauthier. Strong on the puck, stronger, strong on his skates, and very good at knocking opposing, opposing players. My words aren't coming out right. Um, off the puck. Will be going to Boston University for at least three seasons. And I think he's going there, Will Smith. And I'm not sure if the other line mate, I think it's Oliver Moore, is going there as well. Um, high energy player, speedy, lethal goal scorer, plays a heavier game than his size indicates. And I think Philadelphia is going to grab him at seven. 
Next up, we got number eight position, and that belongs to Washington. And um, I think Washington is going to take that other um, that other defenseman that's out there that is, um, I, I, I'm going to tell you why right now. And that guy's name is Axel uh, Sandin Pelica. He is a defenseman uh, playing in the SHL. He's 5'11", 180 pounds, so not overly big. Right shot, the most offensively talented D in the draft. Could replace a guy like, I'm thinking John Carlson in a few years. A pairing of Sandine and Sandine Pelica would be like, like it'll make your head explode. Uh, be interesting to see. <laughs> Power play quarterback, playing against men in the SHL, sneaky good skater, knows when to pinch, explosive, great edge work. That's his skating, can stop on a dime, high level four way mobility, solid playmaker, high hockey IQ, as with most offensive. Defenseman, he needs work on his defensive side. But, like, you know, so what? That's that's the case for everybody. And I believe he'll be a top 4D over there. Um, Washington, I think he's gonna, they're going to take Sandine Pelica. At number 9, we'll have Detroit making their pick. And I think they're going to take a Canadian kid. And that kid's going to be Zach Benson. He's a center, left wing, playing out of Winnipeg in the WHL, 5'10", 160 pounds, so he's not big. A left shot, um, he's got a left shot, he shoots from the left side. Get, get the words out. He is a tireless worker, a point producer that, that could fit right into GM Eiserman's plans. His intensity and competitiveness and drive uh, gives him the ability to win most puck battles despite his small stature. Elite passer with incredible vision, threads the needle, uh, great anticipation, very smart player on both sides of the puck, creates offense, high floor and high ceiling, great puck distributor and playmaker, not the most physical player because of his size, and it's why I think he drops down to number nine for Detroit to take him because he's kind of rated between five and nine. I think he, he drops to nine. Top six potential and also elite potential. And personally, I think um, at number nine, if Benson is there, I think Eiserman um, is going to grab him there. And that leaves us with number 10, the last one. We're only going to number 10 here because uh, otherwise we'll be here till tomorrow, and I don't want to do that. And that's St. Louis's pick. And I think they're going to take uh, this guy. Dalibor Dvorsky, he's a center from Slovakia. He's 6'1", 200 pounds, so he's actually got good heft to him. So you're hitting him, and he's he he's hitting you back hard. Left shot, 17 years old, playing against men. In, in a second-tier pro Swedish league, but still he's playing against men and doing well. Creative, offensive player, projected to be a goal scorer. Powerful and quick um, wrist and slap shots. Um that catch goalies off guard, makes the tough passes, threads the puck through tight spaces. And that's what she said last night. Excellent on the power play at the right um, circle as distributor or finisher. Very similar to uh, Pedersen in Vancouver. Has defensive instincts and a tenacity that few so young display. Wins puck battles along the boards. And from what I can gather, projects as a, to me, a Phil Deneau type. Uh, but a better Phil Deneau type and probably with a little more size there. Um, but that scores a little more, right, than Phil Deneau. Needs to get faster and play more from the middle. Can tend to play the perimeter too much. But both are fixable, those things. Top six potential. Power play and PK, I think you can play both. And there you go. That rounds out the top ten for me. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think about my picks and what you would do and that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time, stay safe out there. Peace out, y'all. Ciao. Have a good night.